Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be learning about pressure measurement within liquids and gases, specifically with the use of manometers. We saw in the last video that piezometers can only be used to measure pressure in liquids, whereas manometers can be used to measure moderate pressures in a pipeline network containing liquids and gases. Consider the situation shown in the diagram of a pipeline containing a fluid of uniform density rho that is flowing. And as just stated, note that the fluid can be a liquid or a gas. The diagram shows a cross-sectional view of the pipeline, and so the direction of flow is perpendicular to this view, either into or out of the screen. The manometer consists of a transparent U-shaped tube with one end inserted into the side of the pipeline with the other end of the tube open to the atmosphere. The manometer tube contains a second fluid, which must be a liquid this time. This second fluid is commonly referred to as the manometric liquid and has uniform density rho m, which is different from the pipeline fluid. The density of the manometric liquid rho m must always be greater than the density of the liquid flowing in the pipeline. In the case where the pipeline contains a flowing gas, the presence of the manometric liquid prevents the gas escaping through the open end of the tube. And in the case of a liquid flowing through the pipeline, for the manometric liquid to lie below the pipeline fluid, like we can see here, rho m must be less than rho. In the case of an inverted manometer, where the manometric liquid lies above the pipeline fluid, the opposite is true, and so rho m must be less than rho. Both fluids must also be immiscible for a manometer to function correctly. This just means that the two fluids do not mix and therefore a distinct interface forms between the two fluids. Additionally, in practice, the manometric liquid is often dyed with a contrasting colour to the pipeline fluid. This just helps the observer identify the interface better. The pipeline fluid is under pressure and so some of the fluid is forced into the manometer tube at point A. The greater the pressure of the flowing fluid, the more that enters the manometer. The pipeline fluid that enters the tube forces the manometric liquid further round the tube, and so alters the positions of the lower and upper interfaces of the manometric liquid. The lower interface between the pipeline fluid and the manometric liquid is in the left side of the manometer, and the upper interface is in the right side of the manometer, and is at atmospheric pressure as the tube is open to the atmosphere. Therefore, the upper interface has a gorge pressure equal to zero. The pressure at point A, PA, can then be determined by measuring the relative heights of the upper and lower interfaces, which is done as follows. The two fluids within the manometer tube are static. Therefore, drawing an imaginary horizontal line through the lower interface, denoted x, we know that the pressure at elevation x in the left-hand side must be the same as the pressure at elevation x in the right-hand side, as there is no horizontal variation in pressure in a static fluid. Hence, the gorge pressure at elevation x in the right-hand side, Px, is equal to rho m g h2, and the gorge pressure at elevation x in the left-hand side, Px, is equal to Pa plus rho g h1. Equating the gorge pressures at elevation x gives rho m g h2 is equal to Pa plus rho g h1. And then rearranging for the pressure at point A, Pa is equal to g times by rho m h2 minus rho h1. Therefore, with the density of the flowing fluid and the manometric liquid already known, the pressure in the flowing fluid at point A can be determined by measuring the two heights H1 and H2. This method is applicable for measuring the pressure with a tube open to the atmosphere. In the next video, we will work through two examples using closed differential manometers, where we measure a pressure difference between two points in a pipeline. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.